Welcome to another Autogefühl episode with Thomas. Yes, we are still out there and always out there for you. Today with the all new generation Cupra Leon. Today as the plug-in hybrid model. But all you need to know about the Cupra Leon in this new generation and also comparing it a little bit, especially in the driving moderation, Golf GTI, Skoda Octavia, RS IV and also plug-in hybrid or the pure petrol engines, which is the best choice? Exterior interior and the driving experience as you know in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front, the new Cupra Leon has this new front face, of course, similar to the Seat Leon in the new generation, but here with the Cupra with the more aggressive styling here, high gloss black with this honeycomb structure alike. Cupra logo in this tribal style, copper accentuations, sporty lower bumper. Graphane gray is the color for today, a very interesting color. There are also matte colors in gray and blue available, by the way, but this one here with the metallic color, also pretty interesting. Daytime running light in a you know spectacular style. LED is standard. However, here for the Leon, the Matrix LED are not yet available. Maybe at the mid-cycle refresh or something, but that's a difference to the Octavia, for example, or to the Golf, where you can get the Matrix LED and also head-up display. These two options are not available for the Leon. The length is at 4 meters 66, 15 foot 3 or 183 inches here for the estate. Of course, there's also a shorter version available with the hatch. Both, however, have the same wheelbase and there's a longer wheelbase now in this new Cupra Leon generation and also the Seat Leon generation. They share now the wheelbase with the Skoda Octavia. 19 inch wheels are standard indeed with the copper accentuations really large and you have to be careful not to damage them definitely and here the roof line with the st of course carried out also then here this is an additional length then if comparing to the hatch strong spoiler here in the side area and usually the cooper version would sit a little bit lower however here with the plug-in hybrid versions they do not sit lower that's why it appears a little bit higher than in comparison however if you compare it recently to the octavia vrs version this one doesn't appear that low actually and once again i think styling wise the cooper leon really nails it the rear probably most interesting here you can see here the light strip all across the vehicle, really cool. Cupra logo, Cupra lettering, very nice design, I think. However, then, out of the crew, fake exhaust police, because here, pure fake exhaust left and right. I mean, it's a beautiful fake exhaust style. Yes, the rear one, however, underneath. The question is here do you think it's that beautiful that we can excuse it or not? So for the Cupra Leon, there's a 2-liter TSI with 245 horsepower or with 300 horsepower, front-wheel drive only, or a 310 horsepower version with all-wheel drive exclusively for the ST for the estate. But this one here, you can see it here with the orange electric elements, 1.4 TSI, turbo petrol engine, but again 245 horsepower, both combustion engine and electric motor powering the front wheels once again. The slowest version, especially here with the estate together, but then again, you also have electric driving moments. And recharging this 13 kilowatt hour battery with 3.6 kilowatt AC max. So not that fast, but for plug-in hybrid vehicle with a small battery, it doesn't matter so much actually. And then pure electric driving around maximum 40 kilometers in summer, so around 20 miles. Closing sound, solid, nice. 
inside of the doors in the front, soft touch here and a nice fabric design right there and leatherette for the handle. Cupra entry badge is also illuminated at night and then the completely new cockpit here with the copper accentuations, steering wheel, this is the optional one with the drive selector and then nice sport seats. You have fabric on the inside right here and leatherette on the outside so the seats are animal free. So also a sustainable and sporty choice, integrated head restraint that looks really, really fancy. So like that, also with the copper situations and they hold you tight, but at the same time, they're also comfortable long term. So very well done. And getting inside, it's a typical compact car style and you feel very much at home here in the cockpit again the seats are really comfortable they hold you tight especially in the upper area but at the same time they give you you know enough space to move around so your lower back is also really fine at least for me and with one wings 86 or six with one still you know plenty of headroom of course with the panoramic roof which is an option one of the few options and here to the side Still some headroom left, so that works. Steering wheel, manual control, but a smooth process up and down and in and out. So seating position-wise, sporty, at the same time comfortable. I think they found a good mix here. Interior overview, nice structure at the dashboard. Soft touch design. And then this here, also the matte feeling then. Also you hear that, so that's really cool. Steering wheel with the copper accentuations here and there. Feels also good quality. Option of super sport steering wheel here also with the driving mode selector. Click through the driving modes or always click and hold and then it directly hops to the Cupra mode. Start and stop the engine right here. Cruise control on the left side. The right side you control the digital instruments. Zoom more details to that. 10.25 inch. On the right side a normal Seat Leon would start with an 8 inch screen but all the Cupras automatically have the bigger one also 10 inch screen. Wide screen format and the temperature sliders are here but to control them while driving is not that good and easy and also it lags a little bit behind and this is here the volume control also with the slider I think that's not a good user interface. There, the previous generation was better. Soon more details to the infotainment system here and also to the lower console and so on. This is the glove box here. It's dampened and also has some decent size in there. So that's actually good. And you can already see something of the ambient light around here. Overall, I think a likable atmosphere in the cockpit. It looks cleaner than before, but then again, at the cost of a more complicated user interface. Copa contrast also here at the air vents and this part here, the top part of the dashboard, nice structure and also soft touch. Ambient lighting, you can also see it here, really nice all the way around. And I also have some night or dark shots for you where you can see the ambient lighting in a different color and also this entry badge and also the puddle light. So from the exterior visible when you open or close the car at night. The digital instruments, you can switch them around what you want to see, different view modes like this. Yeah! Brum, brum. And then you can also have this one here with the map for example or like this. So different stylings available no matter what you want. And then also you can switch around the left side and the right side. So pretty much adjustable but most of the time. It's not really necessary. Now details to the screens. You have this app view like there. They can also go to the Apple CarPlay. It's also available wireless. This is not a bread, this is cork cover. <laughs> so um, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto both available wireless, but you can still use the cable if you prefer that connection. It charges faster than of course, but there's also inductive charging pad than in the lower part. Here you can always go back to the Cupra mode, but first of all, let's listen to the music system right here. Yeah, it sounds actually quite decent. Have a couple of speakers in there. Yeah. So satisfied with that. Back to the Cupra system. Here you have different main menus. Also this one is available, for example. Um, fuel consumption, it always depends. If the battery is empty, you can have some 7 to 8 liters in one kilometers, 30 mbg US plus, 40 mbg UK plus. But then if the battery is there, actually, and it can be a mix, you know, so you can go lower in the liter figures, but higher in the energy consumption. Always hard to say for plug-in hybrid vehicles. Like this, or then again this, uh, uh, well, a few, but you see the overview here is, here is sometimes a little bit 
doubtful. So to me, over a little bit too complicated. Why do I have to press the magnifier for that? Um, yeah, I'm not so sure about that. Sometimes you're searching things and not really find them immediately. So far today, actually the responsiveness is okay. It's not the best one and it always depends also on the current web connection, for example. This is, by the way, here. This would be the range where I can drive with the electric power. So um, that's, you know, if you wonder about that, the Skoda has that in the very same way, for example. And in the vehicle settings, you can also change something of the driving assistance, for example, background lighting here, for example, according to the drive profiles at the moment, but you can also individualize that. And here for the battery, you can have the e-mode, pure electric driving, but also in the hybrid mode, and then you can set the battery reserve, so you can charge the battery, but that's not efficient, but might make sense for emission zones. In the lower area then here, two USB-C chargers, and this is also inductive charging, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto indeed also work wirelessly. DSG shifting lever, drive mode here, shift by wire, so there's no mechanical link, reverse, and the transitions front and back again, they are really fast now, so that helps you also in driving, and really clean up this whole area. Easy off button, maybe not at these conditions today. <laughs> and then here the key, it can be fitted right here. This like a, like this directly fits in and there's a Cooper logo at the back part. Cup holders are not adaptive, but have different sizes. And then here a leatherette cover for the armrest and you lift it up and then some more storage and the 12 volt power supply. And here for the panoramic roof, there is the shade right here. And this is then to open it and both work here with the slider function. Um, that's a little bit fancier than before, but more useful. I don't know. Interesting here now for the rear is, first of all, hard pack at the rear inside doors. Here, the Leon and the Octavia share the longer wheelbase of this MQB platform in the new generation, whereas the Golf and the A3 have the shorter wheelbase, unless you go for the Golf variant. So, and then here, Leg room left, although these are the thick sport seats for the base Seat Leon, you have a little bit more leg room without the very thick sport seats, but this still works. Good and nice, comfortable seating position here also for the rear. Headroom directly fits here. It would be a little bit more if you leave out the panoramic roof. And you also have the same nice design with the fabric on the inside that stays cool in summer and warm in winter. And then again, the leatherette on the outside with a high grade leatherette, so no one would see a difference right there. So I think seating wise, once again, very good choice by Seat, by Cupra in this case. Sorry about that. Oh, the Cupra guys will not like that, me for saying that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we know the deal. So then here, cup holders, non adaptive, ski hatch, you can open from here already. And for that middle seat, it is, of course, not covered then with fabric in this case, um, so harder to sit on. Not ideal, I would say. In the middle tunnel here, two, U two more USB-C chargers and a separate climate unit. 380 liters for the hatch, but here, 607 liters for the ST, for the estate version of the Leon, both Cooper and Seat. This is a nice rail left and right, so you can have everything clean. This then here. Cabin trolley inside, no problem. Underneath, here for the plug-in hybrid, two charging cables, the storage, so you can have that in a clean way. And also just here in the front, you can here push the luggage further and then still have the opening possibility here. So I think that's actually quite okay. And then folding the seats easily from here, also then at the other side. So I think that's actually a good mechanism like this and they fold completely flat. As for the measures, the normal length of the trunk is just a little bit more than a meter and the absolute length to the seats as we would be driving about yeah, one meter is 85. And also, of course, the width is relevant as well. Here also a good meter and the height here to the cover around 40 centimeters and the total height like here around 70 centimeters overall very well usable and of course more length more luggage capacity if you compare it to the hatch so you get an idea of how the hatch is opening electric hatch is an option here folding the cupra logo that's pretty cool it goes up and wide opening good access and child safety yeah that's well done nice here we go
Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the new Cupra Leon all new generation and here we have the plug-in hybrid today and also the ST, the estate version here. Clicking through the driving modes, one pressing goes step by step and holding it, press and hold, directly helps to the Cupra mode. Also the S shifting mode automatically activated, that's why we want to be boost from both powertrains, electric drivetrain and also the combustion and in both in the front wheels in this case here. All-wheel drive is available for the estate, but not for this very plug-in hybrid version. And now a little bit wet road, safety first, we let all the cars pass. And then from 30 kilometers an hour, we enter the stage. Let's go. That's 170 kilometers an hour. We had to stop it right here because it's a car in front of us. Good acceleration. Um, seven seconds it is with the estate from zero to one kilometers or zero to 60 miles an hour. And 7.6 actually with the same drivetrain but with the hatch. So the estate was a little bit heavier. Yeah, I mean, did you hear this artificial sound? Whoa, I mean, that, that was so, like, uh, to me, I'm not, I'm not sure how you picked that up on camera. You, sh you should use the comments, but for me, as my real life experience here now, whoa, I think it was a little bit too much. So I think it was even a little bit annoying in the ears. So it, it sounded also too much as for this car is really capable of, you know what I mean? So artificial sound is not, that bad because even with V8 engines, see the V8 naturally aspirated Lexus engine, even that one has sound actuators nowadays because the cars are so well insulated that even with big sports cars, big engine sports cars, you cannot hear so much anymore because the cabin is well insulated, what we also like to reduce tire noise and so on and wind noise, blah, blah, blah. So sound actuators are not the pure evil, but then again, it has to sound right for the vehicle. And I think it doesn't sound right here. We had the same with the Skoda Octavia RS IV, which is also the plug-in hybrid version of the sports version. Yeah, not really suitable, I think. Here again, the beautiful ambient lighting in the sports or Cupra mode. And if we then hop back to the normal driving mode, you see here, for example, blue, but you can also individualize that or just keep it at one straight color always. And I think that's, that's really nice. So uh, very nicely done, this integrated LED ambient lighting. That's one of my favorite features with this vehicle, definitely. And also other sporty features wise, you know, the steering is really nice. One of the best things of this vehicle is also the steering. Very precise, no dead zone angle. Not too exaggerated, so not too direct that you, you know, go all over the place on the motorway or something but really with a nice sporty input slalom is pure fun also this car gives you a very safe handling feeling you feel that you would be in control all the time it's a good balance the weight distribution and so on even here in this plug-in hybrid version this one is a little bit higher than than pure combustion engine version so it's not set lower that's the correct expression you feel that, so the plug-in hybrid version of the Cooper Leon will be the least sporty one, acceleration-wise and also handling-wise. But that's okay. So if you seek a little bit more comfort, if you seek tax benefits because of the plug-in hybrid version, and if you like these pure electric commuting, for example, inside the city, then the plug-in hybrid version has actually an advantage, is quite good. So it's pro and con after all. To me, yeah, I mean, if you save massive amounts of money, especially in Germany, that's the case when you go for a, um, you know, for, for, for a lease vehicle, um, for business, you, or you can use one, then have also private usage in that, and you have to tax, um, you know, pay taxes on the private use, then you can save massive amounts of money here with a plug-in hybrid, for example. And, I mean, it makes sense also in a way when you can recharge at, at home or work and really can commute all electric without any combustion engine emissions during the week, for example. So that would indeed make sense. Also for the environment then, at least for the local environment that we 
can have a little bit better air in the city. Other than that, the real Cupra Leon for me is still the petrol engine, the pure petrol engine. Same also for the Octavia RS. And yeah, here with the SD, of course, you can go for the all-wheel drive version. So if you can afford it, go for the ST and the all-wheel drive version and you have the most versatile Cupra Leon, the fastest one and also with the best acceleration and also snowproof, <laughs> as you can see here. The thing is here, when the road is a little bit wet and but there was straight acceleration, but especially when you have some acceleration here um, in the corner, you know, like this here, here directly, maybe you, you even hear, heard that, directly the wheels were spinning. Okay, this is wet road and it's also quite cold, so no wonder about that still. The thing is here with the 245 horsepower versions of the Volkswagen AGs or VW, Seat, Skoda, of their plug-in hybrid vehicles. We experience the same with the VW Tiguan and also with the Octavia RS IV. With the 245 horsepower output, there's too much electric torque on the front wheels when you just slightly press the throttle and then the wheels spin. With the Passat GTE, for example, with a 280 horsepower version, that's fine. So, I think too much electric torque, just pure on the front wheels, that's a problem. And we did experience that here today once again. Won't be such a problem in dry road, mainly a problem in the wet road. If you think about the electronic differential lock, yes, the sports versions of the Octavia and the Leon do have that. The mechanical differential lock only for the highest horsepower pure, pure petrol engine. Yeah, and the all wheel drive versions, they also don't need that because they distribute the power to the rear wheels then anyway for a substantial share. Once again, the nice ambient lighting. Sound installation is actually quite good here in the tunnel, of course, really loud in comparison to outside, but here at the good niveau, so no problem about that. And once again, we go to the Cupra mode and accelerate out here. That's 150, we leave it like at that. Also showing me electric boost is working at this moment and I'm not driving fast here because it's you know quite wet and also not that warm and I think I'll also reduce the speed just safety precautions you know when it's summer and dry we also go 200 kilometers 125 miles on the stroll but I never go faster um, by the way it's fast enough only possible in Germany anyway and for testing purpose that's enough even if some cars can get faster anyway. So usually in my everyday driving life, I don't drive that fast. And once and for the testing purpose, to really show the capability of this car, but usually I also don't drive that fast. And you know, safety and our health is always more important, of course. Here at 130 kilometers an hour, like 80 miles an hour, I think it's a good cruising speed. Also noise insulation wise, it's nice. And I think, once again, best thing about this car for me is here. Blind spot monitor, very well integrated, and when I hit the turning indicator, then it's also flashing as an additional warning. So, best thing about this vehicle to me is again the neutral handling. It feels so great and safe. And with Golf and Leon, I've been to snow and ice tracks on frozen lakes in Sweden and Finland, and it was always so much fun. And I can just repeat that the sporty versions of these compact vehicles are actually also great track vehicles. They can be used really on race tracks and you can have a lot of fun with that. Not necessarily you need the true sports car chassis for that. So good neutral handling, very nice in the corners, safe feeling, that's the best thing about this vehicle. Also some negative sides we mentioned here today, but that's why you're here, you know. So we click through the driving modes, go back to the normal mode once again, Good to have that here, right there. Sadly, it's also an option to have that steering wheel with the drive selector. That Super Sports steering wheel is an option indeed. You get a sporty wheel steering wheel from Standard, yes, but that one then with the selector is an option. Other than that, not so many options left. And yeah, the panoramic roof, I mentioned that earlier, that one is of course an option. But other than that, when you go for Cooper Leon, it will almost be ready to drive as it is. And last comment again about the seats. They are sporty, they're keeping me tight also in fast driving situations, but they're also comfortable long term. So really happy with these once again. And then if you ask me, 
the Golf, GTI, the Cupra Leon, the Skoda Octavia RS or VRS. Between these and then also about plug-in hybrid, pure petrol. What to pick there? I mean, it's a really tough choice, definitely. You always have to compare the dealer prices. Some of their good offers for some models, if you're open to pick whatever. And of course, and again, well, the tax benefits if you go for the plug-in hybrid model. So if you can save massive amounts of money and can also use recharging and have fun in commuting electric, then the plug-in hybrid models might be something for you. If you want the most sporty driving fun and want to have it maybe a little bit less complicated and cannot recharge anyway with your charging infrastructure, then go for the pure petrol. And then I would go for the all-wheel drive versions, if that's available. It's not available with the GTI, of course, but here then with the Cupra Leon, for example. And I think the styling here for the Cupra Leon really works, both exterior and interior. Um, so, emotional-wise, maybe this would be my pick. I mean, it's not my favorite logo here, this tribal-like Cooper logo, but I think the copper accentuations work very well, make the car unique. The seats are very really nice with the fabric on the inside and so on. The Octavia RS was also a good ride, you know, um, no doubt about that. That one I would pick if you want a sedan style, then go for the Octavia RS sedan. Have a, you know, very beautiful, like, mini Audi A7, <laughs> maybe like this. If you want the estate, then go here for the Cupra Leon ST as the all-wheel drive pure petrol version that I would go. And if you go for a hatch, yeah, I mean, maybe then the Golf GTI is still the classic pick also if you think about resale value and so on and so on. So for me today, not a yes and no answer. Um, so, but it depends, you know, but I think if you really ask yourself what is important to you, I gave you a lot of clues of what is the right choice for you. And now I would like to hear from you, what would be your choice? Golf GTI, Cupra Leon, or the Skoda Octavia VRS? And then, as plug-in or pure petrol? Leave me your comments. But before that, we also want to tune in to some more city driving and motorway driving assistance systems. So these two things are to follow right now. And now here in the construction lane, Travel Assist is being activated, the most sophisticated assistance system. Here I'm letting the car steer me. Of course, I'm always aware that I can intervene. Here in this construction site, it's a harder test for the vehicle. But so far, the lane is being kept also quite centralized and also the transitions are really smooth. So, so far, that's really nice. What about the exit of this construction, this construction lane? I, you know, I'm really... Oh my God, should I trust the car? No, <laughs> sorry, I don't do that. <laughs> so in these situations, mm, yeah not relying on this 100%. That's also how it works, you know, so you should not rely on it 100%. Talking about 100, 100 kilometers an hour, and here between the wide lines, that's piece of cake then for this vehicle to um, maintain the speed also set here and also the you know, center of the lane. And this is really smooth transition then here and here. I can also show off a little bit, but it's not meant to leave the steering wheel like this. You always have to keep your hands on it also with capacitive function here now in this new generation. Sadly, no animal skin alternative wrap yet available. Then setting here means step one kilometer back or resume one kilometer up and plus and minus 10 kilometer steps up and down. That's how the solution works here. And now do some city driving, see here, also, when you just accelerate in the city, just, just a little bit, really nice. Blind spot monitor was there, maybe you've seen it flashing right there. Very well integrated, very interesting new integration for the blind spot monitor, definitely. So that's pretty cool. And in the city driving, you do feel the 19 inch wheels. Although this vehicle is equipped with the DCC, the adaptive crew, um, <laughs> yeah, adaptive cruise crew as well, but DCC is the adaptive suspension dynamic chassis control, that's the abbreviation. So 
still feeling the 90 inch wheels going through these potholes and so on they really reduce the comfort and the 19 inch is standard for the Cooper Leon so if you want it more comfortable you have to go for the Seat Leon and not pick the Cupra version. Yeah, you have to live with that, but then again, it's a sporty feeling. Also due to these 19 inch wheels, of course, the DCC is also set on a stiffer note than with the Seat Leon. Overall, still really cool and fun driving. Sometimes, mm, also in combination with the uncomfortable ride, then you feel that, you know, and also hear it when it's like, bam, especially at the rear axle. Although this car here is equipped with the more sophisticated rear axle already, the Multilink, um, you know, where we talk about this whole platform, Golf, Leon, Octavia, A3, and so on. So all the plug-on hybrid models have the more sophisticated rear axle. But still, the wheel choice is here, in this case, then the main deciding factor. And then, whoa, we yeah, really feel that in this case. But if you buy the Cupra, you want it sport, yeah. The moment you can see here, the ambient lighting is in blue. That's again, pretty nice, like a river hoop. Jagger used to call it that way. And once again, when I go to the sports mode, then it switches then to the red color, also signalizing I'm in that sports mode. And then I get the power boost from both of the drivetrains. What I can also do, talking about energy preservation for maybe emission zones in the city or something, I can stick in this E-mode, then I'm just driving electric, silent, pretty nice, very cool. In the S-mode, when I accelerate, there, there's the sound actuator, like... But that's pretty much fake. But it sounds actually quite impressive, more like, more sounds like six-cylinder, like something. But that, what I can also do is switching from the E-mode into the hybrid mode, in this case, the car's all already in it. And if I'm here in the hybrid mode, yeah, to control it while driving, again, a little bit distracting. Set it here and set the battery reserve to a higher level. So at the moment I'm at 64% and I can set it to 100% and that means the car is charging the battery for me. So that would make sense if you know you're driving on the motorway and you want to use some fuel, extra fuel for that and then want to drive all electric later on again. That's not efficient at all. It doesn't make any sense besides if you want to go through these emission-free zones, if they already exist in your area or will exist at some point. Other than that, as I said, it doesn't make any sense. So and we can also um, leave it at a lower stage or something or also shut it off completely. Again, looking at that screen and also controlling the temperature, once again distracting unless you try to use the voice control. Set temperature to 23 degrees. Let's see. Sure. Yeah, that worked. So, and in this case, I think that would be easier than doing something in the screen for the temperature. This again, more uh, infotainment system where you have users saying like, okay, I want to have a 23 degrees Celsius, leave it at this and that's it. Here, when you lift the throttle, recuperation is being happening, the car is decelerating and notable, it's not like a really harsh one pedal feeling deceleration, but it is definitely notable. I think it's okay. And if you hit the brakes, then more recuperation is happening. Or for example, also know when I'm going downhill and only when more braking power is needed, then the real brakes are being applied. Also a nice steering feel handling in the city easy to park this car in and out. The seats also give you a lot of side support while driving longer trips maybe. That also adds to the comfortable feeling of this vehicle. So besides of the reduced comfort from these huge wheels, everything else, yeah, okay, infotainment system is complicated. Told you that many times with the new Golf, Leon, Octavia and so on. But all the other things here, very well usable and still feeling very much at home in this vehicle although we have to say considering the user interface which wasn't that fancy before but better to use and the faster infotainment system which had less 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 function but just was faster really have to say i still feel at home in this vehicle yes but i felt more home in the predecessor generation really have to say that
And now to our conclusion for today with the Cooper Leon here in the new generation. Plug-in hybrid version we had here today, but we also taught you more about the different versions we have Golf GTI, Skoda Octavia RS IV or VRS and here the Cooper Leon. So the true sporty models will be still the pure petrol engines, yes, and they're also a little bit sportier, better in acceleration and so on. The plug-in hybrid models, however, good when you can recharge frequently at home or at work, can commute inside the city, all electric, or if you can have a lot of tax benefits as for that. So a little bit higher also the model, but it's not quite that obvious here with the Cooper Leon than we recently had with the Skoda Octavia VRS IV, which really looked definitely higher in the plug-in hybrid version. Exterior wise, I think probably among these three, the most beautiful one, is it? Tell me in the comments, what's your take on that? I think a really nice and sporty design, but very elegant and these copper accentuations fit very, very well. Interior also with a very unique and sporty styling and in this new generation more space than before especially in the rear compartment and also a very well usable trunk. The driving experience precise, good in the handling, a neutral balanced feeling. Acceleration is powerful enough here in the plug-in hybrid version but again the pure petrol engines will be sportier. But overall I still think that the driving experience here is very very good with the Cupra Leon. I really like the driving. Aspects to mention on the negative side is the 19-inch wheels look kick-ass, but then they reduce the comfort and the new infotainment system too slow, too complicated. These are the two negative points, definitely. Once again, a sporty and elegant experience, exterior inside and also while driving. Thank you so much for tuning in today. See you next time.